The Sony a7 IV is a fantastic hybrid camera and everybody has their setup differently. I want to show you today how I have mine set up for both photo and video so when I need to quickly change things out and about in the field when I'm out shooting, photo or video, I can quickly do that. So I'm going to show you all the buttons I have assigned on the camera, why I have it set up that way. I'm actually going to give you the ability to download all those settings if you wanted to and then we're going to jump into the menus and physically show you how I set up each of those settings. So let's get right onto my a7 IV here and show you how I have it set up for photo. Now you're fully aware with the a7 IV you actually have dedicated photo and video settings and when you change this dial on the top here that actually gives you either photo or video mode and that's one of the features that makes the a7 IV probably one of the best hybrid cameras out there right now. Now when it comes to physical settings I have my front dial assigned to my shutter speed, my rear dial right here assigned to my aperture and my ring right here on the dial assigned to my ISO. Now on the top, my C2 button I actually have as a crop mode, so I can jump in, get a little bit more reach there with whatever lens I'm using. It actually gets you a 14 megapixel still over a 33 megapixel still when you're not in the crop mode there. So zoomed in, you'll get 14 megapixels, zoomed out, you'll get 33 megapixels, and it actually does tell you that right there as well. My C1 button I have assigned to my eye autofocus, so if it doesn't grab eye autofocus for whatever reason, holding the C1 will allow it to do that. AF on I have assigned as a focus hold, so if I want to focus on something but then reframe, recompose my shot, by clicking and holding AF on, my focus will not change. AEL I have assigned to my auto exposure lock and when I hold that down you'll see on the bottom right here that little star means that my exposure isn't going to change when I have that hold, held down. If I let go of that the auto exposure will kick in and the camera will expose accordingly. I don't use the joystick for anything on here. Uh, the function button obviously brings up my quick function menu. Up, I have a sign on the D-pad to toggle through all the view options on the camera directly. Now, typically I am leaving it on this one where I can see everything. Left, I have assigned to my drive mode, so if I need to swap between uh, continuous shooting speed or a timer I, uh, or a bracketing as well down there, you can do so. Right, I have assigned to my ISO, even though I actually have it set on the dial too. So I didn't really use that for photo. And then down is for my focus area. The C4 button on the bottom there is actually my toggle for auto white balance lock on or off. So if I don't want my white balance to change, if I click on that, the white balance will stay exactly the same. And then my C3 button, I actually have assigned as a manual focus auto focus. Now some lenses will have that little switch on there, but other lenses won't. And if you need to quickly change between manual focus and auto focus, having it assigned to a physical button is a great way to do that. So when it comes to stills, that is basically how I have my camera set up. That gives me everything I need to, to quickly take photos. Quick interruption just to chat about today's sponsor, which is Cuts. Now Cuts have been supporting me and the channel for the past six months or so, and I'm always wearing their stuff. If you can't tell already, I love everything that they put out. It fits well, it goes in the wash, and it doesn't lose its shape. Everything is premium menswear. Stop just wasting your money on low quality stuff over and over again. Invest in a good set of pants, couple of t-shirts, hoodies, that's gonna last you a really long time. You're not gonna have to iron it after every time it goes in the wash. It's one of those things you really have to try and then you'll know exactly what it is I'm talking about. The fact that so many athletes and uh, celebrities are wearing cuts as well kind of speaks volumes about how they regard cuts as well. They have something for everybody out there. It's gonna look good for all occasions, no matter what it is that you're doing. And if you wanna try any of their stuff, there's a 15% discount link. Click on that below. You'll get 15% off of everything in your cart and you're welcome. So for my video settings, I have some things that are the same and some things that I change a little bit. So the front is still assigned to my shutter speed. The rear is still assigned to my aperture. And then the dial here is still assigned to my ISO. The C2 button still for crop mode. With crop mode, you get more reach. It's actually a benefit of the a7 IV. The a7S 3 which I'm shooting on right here, doesn't have crop mode. And I actually really miss it. It's useful sometimes. So I have that assigned to my C2. Now, previously, I had my dial assigned on the top there for one, two, or three, however many numbers are, for 24, 60, 120 frames per second. But I've kind of moved away from that now, and I've changed so that my C1 button on here is actually my frame rate. So now I can quickly go between 24 and 60, just like that. And that's actually way quicker than changing the dial, and then it has to pull up that set of settings. And one of the main reasons that I actually changed from using the dial on the top there is because I'm using a lot more custom white balances now. And when you're in a custom setting of one, two, or three, it doesn't allow you to use a custom white balance that you can physically assign and then use a, 
a gray card to detect the actual white balance for. So that's one of the biggest reasons I moved away from that dial. And that's why I now use that. And honestly, this is quicker, to be honest with you. That's much quicker to change your frame rate. My AF on is the same for photo. That just enables my autofocus. So if I'm shooting from behind the camera, instead of having to kind of reach around, push the shutter button there, I can just tap on that and it's gonna turn my autofocus um, to start focusing if it isn't doing it for whatever reason. C3 button again, I have assigned to manual focus, autofocus toggle. So it either turns manual focus on or manual focus off and then back to continuous. But one of the nice things with the a7 IV is you do actually have the ability to just randomly go into manual focus if you want to by turning the focus ring on the front there. And that's a setting in the camera which will show you how to turn on later. It is turned on by default. And then my AEL button on the side here is actually assigned to toggle auto exposure lock on or off. So when I tap that, you'll see the little star appears there. It means my exposure isn't going to change if I didn't want it to. Pushing it again means it will now change automatically. I didn't talk about it in photo, uh, but I do have it assigned the same thing in photo. The exposure compensation dial here, which you can now use for anything, I actually have assigned to cycle through white balances. So if you see if I just turn this, it will actually cycle through all the different white balances, including my custom ones there. So let's just get back to auto white balance and then we're going to lock that. Love that that is now assignable to whatever you want. The little joystick on the back here I actually have assigned to clear image zoom and we'll show you how to set that up in the menus in a little bit. Now the reason I use it like this is because there's two different ways of doing it when you use the little joystick. I can get a slow zoom in there if I wanted to by just clicking it and then uh, holding it to the right there and it will zoom in or holding it to the left and it will zoom out and you can change that speed in the menus as well. But if you click it once and then push up, it will actually zoom in a lot faster and then if you push down, it will zoom in, zoom out a lot faster as well. My up button here I have assigned so that you can cycle through all the different viewable things on the camera directly. Uh, in video, I'm changing this a lot more because there's certain things I need to see now and then. So right now, for example, we can see the level, but you can't view the level and the histogram and the audio signals at the same time or the audio monitors. So you're cycling through that a lot more with video. So it's it's more useful in video than it is in photo where you can just kind of leave all of them on. On the right, I have that assigned to peaking display on or off. So when I need to use focus peaking, I can quickly pull it up and then I can just turn it off again with one more push. Down, I have assigned to zebras, zebras, depending on where you are in the world, whatever you want to call it, for the same reason. You're not always using it, but when you do, you can quickly turn it on and then off again just with the tap of a button. On the left, I have my focus map. Brand new feature for the a7 IV. No other Sony camera has this. No other camera in general has this. This is unique to Sony and I'm sure it's going to be coming on other cameras as well. Basically with this, the way it works is when it's clear like that and you can physically see something, there's no colors over it, it means that that's in focus. Blue and red signifies whether you're either out of focus or what's coming up next in focus. I'll do another video talking about that more in the future. And then down the bottom here, I actually have the same thing assigned as photo. So that is my white balance lock toggle. So it's either locked or unlocked. So you see down here, it's either L means locked. So the white balance isn't gonna change in frame. When it's off, the white balance will change if you're on auto white balance. And then I have one other setting assigned and that is the center button of the D-pad. And when I tap on that, it zooms into the maximum magnification of four, which basically allows me to see magnified close up, like what's in focus and what's not. So pretty useful tool now and then, especially for close up product shots, that kind of thing. I don't have it set to timeout, so it just defaults. When I tap it again, it zooms back out. Now, if you're one of those people that's like, great, I love all those settings. I want my camera exactly like that and I don't wanna to have to do it myself. I got you covered. There's a link down below. You can follow that link. You can download all of my settings. I'll include a video in there of how to actually put those on your camera with like four or five clicks. It's super easy, super quick camera turns off, turns back on, and everything is on there, done, ready for you. Now for that luxury, I'm gonna charge you the equivalent of like buying me a coffee. So thank you if that's what you wanna do. However, I would recommend that you actually learn how to do it properly yourself. You might need to change things, customize things a little bit more yourself, and it's good to learn. And I'm gonna show you that right now. Let's jump back to photo and we'll walk you through all the menus, what they mean, and all that kind of stuff. Back to the photo mode there. Right into the menus here, we have JPEG slash HEIF, which is basically your high efficiency images. Um, so you can pick which we want to use. Now I use JPEGs, or if you want to use one of the high efficiency formats, high efficiency formats, you can 420 or 422. That's just the color depth that you're going to use. I use JPEG. Image quality settings is whether you want to shoot in RAW and JPEG, or just RAW or just JPEG. I use RAW and JPEG. And then for your RAW type, you can use whichever you want to use, I use compressed. Fine, extra fine, standard, or light for your image quality, and then you can set the megapixels there as well. I just use the maximum. For your aspect ratio, that's whether you want it to be wide, square, rectangular, whatever you want, I use three by two. File format, so 
you can record, if you just tap record when you're in the photo mode, it will record for you. Now, you probably don't want to record video this way. You want to jump into the video mode so you can actually get access to a lot more features. But if you really needed to record a quick video file on the fly, you can set what that one uh, what that video file is going to be and then you can go in and change the movie settings there as well for that default when you just tap record in photo aps-c super 35 shooting i have set to auto so if i put an aps-c lens on the front here it will automatically jump into that it will zoom in or crop so you're not getting the the rear of the element in there uh, which is just how full frame lenses work compared to aps-c lenses long exposure noise reduction i have turned off I think it's better to have more control over that yourself. And then high ISO noise reduction. I'm not really going into high ISOs with uh, photos that often, so I just have that left to normal. Color space is sRGB. Lens compensation, you don't need to touch that. Let's jump down to media. So format is obviously how you format a card there. You can pick which card slot you want to format. You can't do both at once, unfortunately. Record media settings is how your camera records to the memory cards. Now, you can set it up so that photos go to slot one or slot two. Video goes to slot one or slot two. So if you want to separate them out, you can have it set up to auto switch. So if you run out of space on card one, it goes to card two. You can do all that kind of thing. I have mine set up, as you'll see here, to simultaneous recording. And what that means is whatever goes on slot one goes on slot two. It's a backup. As someone that shoots professionally, and I get paid to shoot. I want to make sure I have a backup all the time. Recover image database is something you never really want to have to click. If something does go wrong with your memory card, this is a way to automatically try and fix it. Now, the camera will do this automatically if it detects an error anyway, but that's something you really never want to have to use. Display media info will actually allow you to go in and see what space is left on each card as well. So how many images you have left to take, how much video you can record in your current settings. File folder settings is if you want to have a name prefix on all of your, your data that you take, your photo, your video. I have mine set up so that it says A74. You get three letters here. You can change it to whatever you want. So I have mine A74 as a prefix. I have it as a series after. It's going to be a number that just continues after it says A74. I have never used any of those settings. So you can if you want to. I don't use them. I'm not going over it. I'm telling you how I set up my camera. You might be different, but this is how I use mine. So if you do assign things to custom one, two, this is how you'd go through and do it here. Uh, you can recall the information from slot one, from slot two. Uh, you can assign things in there right here, one, two, and three, M1, M2, M4. You can do all that stuff. As I said, I don't do that anymore. So uh, we're not gonna be going through and showing you how to use that. USB streaming. So if you wanna use your camera for streaming for whatever reason, you can go in here and set the, the frame rate that you wanna use. If you wanna use 4K 15 frames per second, you can. I have mine set to 4K 30. Movie recording enabled means that when you are streaming, you can record a backup of that video as well. So. If you ever want to use this for streaming, which I'm actually going to be doing, then that's how you set that up. Drive mode is, you should know what this means. You can access this through a quick setting and I would recommend that you do so, like I have mine set up. So if you want to go through single shooting, continuous shooting, and then the speed, you want to do your self timer, uh, bracket settings, you can specify all that in there. That's how you would change that. But you are going to probably have that assigned to a custom button instead. If you want to use silent shutter, so the physical shutter doesn't make a noise. It's an electronic shutter instead. You can go in and specifically change that there. I like the mechanical shutter sound, but some situations like certain churches for weddings, you're not allowed to make any noise. Or if you need to be quiet for whatever reason, if you're a private eye doing things, then you could go in and change that to electronic. That way the camera is going to take photos and not physically make a sound. I've never touched that. Don't use it. Release without lens means if you don't have a lens attached there or if you're using a manual lens that doesn't have anything on there that the camera can communicate with, you can still take photos. Essentially, the camera is just giving you a direct look at the sensor and the lens is controlling whatever goes through to the sensor. Release without card means if you don't have a memory card in there, you can still take a picture. Kind of a useless setting, but it's there if you need it. Anti-flicker set, I don't ever touch that. Steady shot on or off. This is just stabilization. Steady shot is what Sony calls their stabilization. Zoom would allow you to use something like clear image zoom or digital zoom if you wanted to. Now with uh, RAW and JPEG photos enabled, you can't actually use it. And I don't use this in photos anyway. It's more for video and we'll get into that when we're talking about video. Shooting display is uh, something I use all the time. So this is my grid line. So if we go back here, you see all my grid lines I have turned on. If I turn this off, you'll see they disappear. And you might be wondering, well, why do you have that turned on? It's kind of a mess to see that. Well, for me, 
I use the rule of thirds a lot. Uh, I also am very, I'm a diehard symmetry person. If you had to sum up how I shoot, it would be based heavily off of symmetry. And I like to know where the center is. And you can see right there with all the crosses exactly where the center is. Now you can just change it to the rule of thirds grid if you wanted to, or a square grid. I like to have the diagonal and square. That's just what I use. I never use live view display set. Next we have exposure. So setting your ISO. So that is your current ISO setting. Again, you're going to have it assigned physically in the camera instead, like through a custom button. But you might want to set your range limit here. So if you don't want to go higher in like auto ISO than 20,000 or 25,600 or whatever, you can go through and physically assign that. And you can also set a minimum as well. When you're changing between photo and video, you might get confused here if you're using S-Log. You don't need to worry about it. The camera will default to using the minimum base ISO, which is 800 for video. We'll get into that in a bit. Um, next up, we have exposure compensation. If you want to go in and change it there, I don't change mine. So we're not going to go in and change that metering metering mode. I always use multi. So that's, it's looking at all of the light in there and trying to determine what's the best thing to expose off of. And I always use multi, but if you did want to change that, that's how you do that. Again, you're probably going to have that assigned as a custom bun. I have that in my quick access function menu there as well. Face priority and multi metering self-explanatory if it finds a face it's going to focus on that more than anything else spot metering point i always have set to the center and my ael with shutter so my auto exposure lock with shutter i have that set to auto you can have that set to on or off again i also have that button set to do the same thing if i want like an override flash i don't use flash so we're not talking about that white balance i have it set to auto for the most part Priority set and auto white balance. So depending if you're in a specific situation where you want it to look a little bit warmer or you're in a warm environment, you can go through and change the ambience to uh, to warm there uh, or just white. But I have that set to just standard. Shutter auto white balance lock I have turned off. You can assign it with the shutter button if you want to. But as I mentioned earlier, I have the uh, custom button four assigned to do that for me. So I just have a little bit more control. I'm much of a manual shooter and I prefer to things do things myself. Color and tone, dynamic range optimizer turned off. I would recommend you do the same. Creative look, if you wanna go through and use like one of the creative looks on here, which I've talked about in many videos before, like neutral, that kind of thing. Standard is what I use. Sony's color is fantastic now. Leave it on standard. You don't need to use anything else. Nice thing with the a7 IV, as you do have separate photo and video modes, you don't actually have to shoot photos in log anymore. Picture profile, if you wanted to turn it on for photos, you don't want to, believe me, you could do so. Soft skin effect, don't turn that on. A soft skin effect is gonna make your skin look nice and smooth out, just don't turn it on. Zebras, if you wanna use them, on or off, then you can set uh, your zebra level as well. I don't use this for photos. If you do, it's there if you wanted to. Autofocus, manual focus, how that's set up. So focus mode, I'm always on automatic autofocus for photos. Uh, and then just leave these exactly how I have them set. Tracking sensitivity I have in the middle for photos. Autofocus illuminator is that little red light that comes on there. I have that set to auto. Aperture drive and autofocus standard. Autofocus with shutter is on. So when you depress the shutter there, it's obviously going to autofocus. And then pre-autofocus I have turned off. Focus area, I'm nearly always using wide. I'm not gonna go over the other ones. It's what I use, remember. Focus area limit basically allows you to turn on and off which focus options you have available to you. I just leave them all turned on there. So if I need to go in and access one from the many there is, I can. This one right here, just leave that turned off. Focus area color I have set to red. Auto focus area registration, have that set to off. Uh, and then the rest of these actually, I, ve I very rarely use these. So let's just, um, just cycle through them here. No, nope, don't use any of these. So leave those as is. Face slash eye autofocus, I obviously have that turned on, so it's going to prioritize a face or an eye over anything else. If you weren't shooting a person and you a person walked in the frame and you didn't want them to, to kind of get focus on the camera, then turn that off, but most of the time you're gonna be leaving that on. If you wanna specify whether you're using human, animal, or bird, for focusing, you can. It, the Sony camera will, uh, the a7 IV will detect all of those, so, just pick the one that you want to use. Leave that as is. Right, left uh, selection for eye. I have set to auto. You can change that with a, a physical button. If you want to go to the left eye, the right eye, you can do that. I just have mine set to auto. Leave that as is. Registered face priority obviously is on. Um, I'm not registering faces though. Auto magnify and auto focus means if you are, if you change to manual focus. So if we change to manual focus here, 
and then I start to turn the ring. You'll see how the magnifier comes on. That's a really useful feature now and then. So have that turned on. Focus magnifier, that's just a way to get into it. But as I said earlier, I have uh, a custom button assigned to it, which is the center button there too. Back to the menus. Focus magnification time. So if you want the magnifier to, to turn off after like two seconds or five seconds, that's where you would do it right there. I have mine set to no limit. And then the initial magnification, so I have mine set to 5.5 for photo. So if I zoom in there, you see it's 5.5 magnification. But if you wanted to just have that to one, so when you do tap that, it doesn't do anything, then you can specify the area you physically want to focus on and then tap it and then focus it, you can do that yourself too. Autofocus in focus magnifier, you can have set um, to on or off, I have mine set to on. Peaking display, I'm rarely using focus peaking in photos, more in video, but uh, if you wanted to turn it on or off there, probably assign a custom button somewhere else to do that too. Peaking level, mid, and then color, red is the easiest to see of all the colors in there. Next up, we have uh, a bunch of menus now that we're going to cycle through quickly because these are things you don't need to change the settings on. So we'll just skip right through that. If you're using your phone with the camera to control it, this is where you'd go through. We're not going to touch on that too much. There's a bunch of videos out there that do the same things. So just leave these all as is. Um, there is an option in here as well. Where is it? Airplane mode. Uh, network is from airplane mode. So if you want to save battery or if you're taking photos on a plane and you're worried about your wireless interfering with the plane and making it crash or something like that, you can turn airplane mode on there as well. I just leave it off for the most part. And then finally, this is uh, like the settings of the camera in photo. So area and date, language, area, all that stuff, self-explanatory. Depending on the part of the world you're in, you're obviously going to pick whether you're in NTSC or PAL, I'm in North America and Canada, so I'm using NTSC. If you're in Europe or Japan, you'll be on PAL. By changing it to that, it does reboot the camera. A lot of settings have to change. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, uh, but you're rarely changing that. Reset save settings. So if you want to reset your settings to factory default or you want to load settings that someone has given you or save settings, like I said to you earlier, if you want to download the settings that I'm using, this is how you can save your settings or load my settings. Operational customize. This is where we get down to the nitty gritty of changing all the camera's settings. So if you want to assign things a little bit differently to how I have mine set up, this is how we do it. Now, you can assign both the photo and video modes in here individually, and they will change depending on which mode that you're in. So for photo here, it's pretty straightforward. It actually shows you a picture from the back of the camera here. So C3, C1, AEL, and then when you go uh, click on right, you can actually specify what each of those buttons do. If you click on one you want to change, so for example, uh, C1 right here, which is number three, if you tap on that, you can go through and change that to anything you want, and there's a ton of different options in there. I'm not going to go through each one. Then you can view the back, so like this area of the camera here, so to change the D-pad up, down, left, right, the center button, when you turn it, what all that stuff does, that's how you change it in there. Again, same thing, click right, you can go through and then change it to whatever you want. Then you get the top buttons, so the record button, the C2 button. And then if you have a lens on there that has a lens button on there, a function button or multiple buttons, you can specify what that does. I have it set to focus hold, the same as the AF on button there. And then the dials, what they all do individually. And you can actually separate it. So if you're in manual mode or auto mode, the dials will do different things. As I said earlier, I have mine set the front to shutter, the rear right here to aperture. So TV is your shutter, AV is your aperture. Easiest way to remember that because people get confused just think of the A is aperture. I know the T doesn't mean shutter speed or anything like that, but the A is your aperture. And then the plus or minus here is exposure compensation. That's how I have that set to for photo, for video, as I said, white balance. And then for ISO, I have my ring right there and you can change that to do many different things, but that's how I have mine set up. For video, we'll get into the video bit in a bit. Custom key settings, so if you are in this menu here and you're going through is a nice picture of a chair that's out of focus there when I was setting up for this video. This is where you would, uh, oh, let's get back to where we were. This is where you change that. I never touch those. It's great straight out of the box, to be honest. Function menu settings. So this is if you tap this button FN in photo or video mode, you'll get 10 different options to, sorry, 12 different options to use. So six on the top, six on the bottom. And you can specify what each of those does. So FN, for photo you see here, and then video below. So by tapping on one of those, you can go through and physically change what it does, 
change the order if you needed to uh, by tapping on one. I mean, you do have to go through and physically change them individually if you want to change the order, but it's possible to do that. So if I'm in photo mode, this one on the top here will show up right there. If I'm in video mode, this one on the bottom will show up. And that's how I have mine set up. But for photo, I just have quick things, drive mode, manual focus, autofocus. So if I want to change that back to that. And then focus area, my ISO, exposure compensation, metering mode, uh, recording media. So whether it records to one or two, mine is set uh, simultaneously. Image quality, steady shot, auto white balance or my white balance setting, and then my creative look and then flash. I rarely touch these. I rarely go into this for photo because I can control everything else I need to on the camera itself directly. Different settings for stills and video. This is huge and so useful and just such a great feature to have for a hybrid camera like the a7 IV here. So you can separate your still and your movie functions and your settings. So it can be frustrating sometimes if you go with older cameras from photo to video mode and you got like your shutter speed set to 1 50th, but then in stills you need something completely different. And then when you go back to video, it changes it from what you were on the stills. This allows you to change that. Now, when a box is ticked, that means that you have separate settings for that between photo and video mode. So for example, right now, you can see the shutter speed isn't ticked. So if I change my shutter speed to 1 15th, and then I go to video mode, you see that it actually stays at 1 15th. But if we go back to photo and we change this to ticked, now if I go in and go OK, you have to click OK, otherwise it won't change it. And we change this to, or we leave this to 1 15th, and then we go to video. It's a 1 15th still, because that's how we left it before. But if we change this to 1 50th, which is where we want it typically, if we go back to photo now, it goes to 1 15th. But now if we go back to video, it goes to 1 50th. So that's really great for keeping your settings separate. And you can do the same thing for your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO, exposure compensation, metering, white balance, picture profiles. Picture profiles is a huge one there because it stops you from being in stills uh, and shooting log by accident, which you end up losing some dynamic range. So that's a really useful feature to have. And you should definitely have that um, set up properly for the a7 IV. Display screen settings. So this is whether you're in the monitor uh, or the, the finder. So if you're looking through here uh, or on the monitor directly, what it shows you, everything on there. I have everything turned on. So if I want to cycle through it, I can. And then finder, I have everything turned on. Actually, that one should be on there. Okay, so if you want to specify certain things that are on, certain things that are off, that's how you do it. Recording with shutter, quite straightforward. If you have that turned on, when you hit the shutter on the top there, you will actually record video. Don't know why you'd want that. You have a video button, but it's there if you wanted it to. Uh, we don't touch that. Custom key and dial set. You don't need to change this, but there's more options here for separating out functions between photo and video if you want to. Honestly, everything you really need to do is in that menu right there. So I don't find a need to, uh, to change things in here. You can separate out the dials to do different things as well if you wanted to. But as I said, I, I don't have that set up to do so. Dial settings, um, so if you want to, if you want to use a different exposure type mode, like the FX3 has a weird quirk where in certain modes, the dials won't function how you want them to, and you have to have like a custom dial settings to pull it so it does function how you want it to. And I'm not going to get into that in too much detail, but if you want to set it so that if you push a button, it, it pulls a set of dial settings so that maybe this does shutter now instead of that, you can do so, and this is how you'd set it up. If you want to reverse it so that... Uh, when you, your shutter speed goes down, it actually goes up. And when you go up, it goes down for whatever reason. If you're backwards, then you could do that. I have mine set to normal. So going this way. So when I, I turn it clock, clockwise, it goes up. Anti-clockwise, it goes down. Lock operational parts I have set to off. Touch operation on, meaning the touch screen is functional. So if I look through the EVF, I can use my thumb there to pick a focus point or I can tap on something to focus on it. That's there. And if you like to use it that way, this is how you have, should have your setup. So touch panel pad, have it set up to both valid. Touch pad settings, have it to on, absolute position and whole screen. So that means when you do look through the EVF there, you can use your thumb or finger to pick a focus point as you're looking through there and you'll see the focus point move around. You can tap on something. You can actually control your uh, touch screen functions as well by tapping that little button right there and that will change everything. If we tap on it, you see it changes. So then when you can click on things and you can turn it off and 
I'm not going to get into that too much, uh, but that's how you do that. And then uh, touch function in shooting. So either touch tracking or touch focus or off. I have mine set to touch tracking. But when you click on that little box there, you can change that anyway. Accessibility, I don't use this, so we leave that off there. It's great that we have that as an option though. And then finder and monitor options, select finder monitor, so that's auto. So the little thing here, you see how that turns on and off? That's what that does. Pretty straightforward. Monitor brightness, if you're outside shooting in a sunny day, I have mine dimmed right now so the exposure works. This is where you'd change this. Sunny weather is the absolute brightest the screen will get to. Uh, and then viewfinder brightness, I have mine set to auto. You change it by looking through there. Color temperature, you shouldn't need to change this, leave as is. Display quality, I have mine set to high. I also have my finder frame rate set to high. And then that displays, uh, sorry, that locks out any other options, but that's how I have mine set up. Uh, leave that as is. Gamma display assist, you're not really going to be using for photo, for video. We'll get into that in a second. Gamma display assist type, leave this to auto. You'll see why in a bit. Uh, remain shoot display, leave that to non-display. And auto review five seconds. So when you take a picture, it displays it for five seconds. If you want to specify a different amount of time, um, let's go back to where we were. Oh, that disappeared where we were. There we go. If you want to change that to 10, 5, 2, or off, you can do so. I have mine set to 5. Power display. So auto monitor off. Don't have mine turned off at all. Power off. Not at all. Uh, sorry, power save. So if you're not using the camera, it will turn itself off. I have mine set to off. Power save by monitor. I have that set to both linked. I actually don't know what that does. Probably should look it up. It hasn't hindered me in any way. So although if I knew what it did, maybe it would. We'll leave it as is. Auto power off temperature, huge setting. A74 does overheat video up here, only in certain modes. Have that set to high, and you're gonna really basically alleviate a lot of those issues that you could potentially have, as well as having the screen open. Watch that video up there. Sound option, volume settings. So how loud do you want the volume to be? That should actually be louder. Audio signals on or off, so if you like it to beep when it's, uh, Focused, you have that on or off. I have that off because I hate it. And then USB connection type, not going to change this. This is custom depending on how you're using your camera. If you connect it to remote control via a cable or something like that. External output, we'll cover this in video. And then setup options, um, we're not changing that. But if you wanted to know what your version is for the camera, for firmware and for lens, click on here and it will tell you what that is. That is it when it comes to settings. There's one other thing here, my menu. So if you want to quickly add things in here, so things that you can't typically add into any of the options here or assign a key, but you use frequently, uh, menus, uh, my menus, you can add them in. So you can add an item there. You just pick literally anything in the menus and it basically adds it to the top. So when you go in there, you just have quick access and you can have multiple menus or multiple my menus. I have mine set to file format, movie settings, PC remote function, and then the one I use most frequently is format to format the cards. Right, let's, uh, let's jump now into video. So now to change to video on the top here, click that dial and change to video. So now we're in video mode. Now, some of these things are gonna be the same and if they are, we will kind of gloss over it, but for video, you're given a lot more options to control things um, that you wouldn't have seen in the stills menu, and it's great that they've separated that out now. So image quality is going to be what you're recording in, 4K, 1080, whatever you want to use. File format, bunch of different options here. Codex, this is going to be hugely dependent on what computer you're using, what size memory card you're using, the quality you need, all that kind of stuff. So in general, if you don't want to have to use proxies. You want to shoot in uh, the least compressed, which is XAVC SI 4K. If you have a higher end computer, one of the M1 computers, it can handle um, uh, M1 Max, sorry, it can handle XAVC S 4K, no worries. More compressed is going to be a bit of a burden on it, and you probably need to use proxies there, but these will give you uh, a decent amount of information still for, for coloring but also a lot smaller, so you're not gonna burn through memory cards as quick. Movie settings will be your frame rate, so 24, 30, or 60, but as I mentioned earlier, I have my C1 button assigned to do the same thing, just a quicker way of doing it, and then your, um, your bit rates, uh, your color depths, so I have mine set to 100 megabit, 422, 10-bit. That's going to be the most information that you can record in there. It's also going to be the most taxing on your computer to edit with. You use whatever you want to use. That's what I use. 
SNQ settings I do not use. Some people do, some people don't. I would rather just shoot 60 frames per second by changing to 60 frames a second. The big difference between using SNQ and shooting it otherwise is SNQ, if you shoot in slow motion or whatever, it will play back in slow motion. Whereas if I shoot 60 frames per second, it's going to play back at 24 frames per second on the camera. You then have to slow it down in post. Proxies, if you want to use them, you can do so within camera and then you can go through and change all that. I don't use them, so we're not going to talk about that. APS-C shooting, again, auto. So depending on the lens that I have on the camera there, it will either crop it for me automatically if it detects it or not. But I also have my C2 bar on the sign to crop there for me if I wanted to. So I can get extra reach with no quality loss. And uh, obviously when you're in 4K60, it's going to default to a crop there as well. Lens compensation, don't touch it. Leave it as is. Media, how you format there. I also have that in my, men my menus as we just talked about in photos. Recording media settings, we talked about this before. We don't need to cover it again. For file settings, you actually have more options. And I did think I talked about it maybe incorrectly for photo um i talked about it referencing video so for photo you only get three characters to pick from for video you get a lot more options so time and date and uh, all that kind of thing so i have it set to file number series title and date and then i'm gonna actually go through and uh, assign something in here it's a seven four and then okay no i want a little underscore in there as well so a seven four it's like using an old school phone. There we go, underscore. So now the way it will record is a74 underscore date underscore file name. So it's great if you're using multiple cameras and you need to pick and know which one is which. You put FX3 at the front, A7S3, A7 III at the front. Know which camera is which just by looking at the files if it's all dumped in one folder. So that's how you do that. Shooting mode, exposure control type. Okay, so... To simplify this as easy as possible, if you like to control everything manually on the camera, leave it on PASM mode, so Program Auto Shutter Manual Mode. If you want to have the ability to have it set to Auto Shutter, Auto Aperture, you want to change it to Flexible Exposure Mode, but then that removes the ability to use a lot of functions of the camera, so I'd recommend, just to keep it simple, leave it on this mode right here. Camera set memory, as I talked about before, I used to have one, two, and three assigned to different video modes. I don't use that anymore, so we're not going to talk about that. I talked about that previously anyway. USB streaming, talked about that before. Silent shutter, we talked about that before. Audio recording, on, obviously. Uh, recording level, the a7 IV is really hot compared to other Sony cameras, so you probably want to... Um, put this down a little bit lower than you typically would. This is going to be entirely up to you. I have mine set to, I think it was 16 before, and I find that's pretty good for me so far. Audio out timing lead for live. Wind noise reduction, turn that off. You don't want the camera trying to think that there's, uh, or you're thinking there's noise reduction that needs to be applied, and it doesn't, so leave that off. Audio level display on. This will appear if you have something attached there, like the little Sony mic, which I'm doing a review on soon. Audio level display you want to leave on. That way you can see... The audio levels there, if you turn that off, they will disappear. It's more useful to have them on for video, leave them on. Time code has a time and a place. We're not talking about it today. In general, most people aren't using it. Image stabilization, steady shot. So for the camera, you have three options. Off, if you're using it on a gimbal, leave it off. Standard and active. Standard is going to do a little bit, not a lot. It's not great. Active does more than you think. And uh, for shooting handheld, it can be almost tripod level. I'd recommend having this as an option in your function menu. That way you can turn it on and off quickly and easily when you need to instead of having to go through in the menus. I use active probably on more than I have it off. Really useful. Plus you can use it to get a little bit more reach if you need to. It gives you a little bit of a crop, 0.1, I believe. And then if you're actually using a manual lens attached, you need to go in and specify what the focal length of that lens is. And you can do that literally by the millimeter there. You can go eight, nine, 10, all the way up to whatever. Otherwise, the camera will apply this weird warping in the corners and it just looks weird. So in general, it's going to be just automatically applied for you um, when you're using a lens that is an E-mount lens that's autofocus. If it's a manual lens, that's where you'll go in and change it. Zoom. So if you want to use clear image zoom, so for example, when I tap right here, as I said earlier, um, you can zoom in or you can zoom in quick. That's clear image zoom. You have a few options here, optical zoom only. So if you have a Sony, a Sony power zoom lens, you can control it. 
uh, or clear image zoom or digital zoom. Digital zoom, stay away from for obvious reasons. Clear image zoom is zoom with pretty much next to no quality loss, highly debated. That's what I use. Have it assigned to that. That way, when you have a zoom function enabled, like I do with my joystick, it will, uh, oh, I'm zoomed in. There we go. That's how it will function. Let's get that back to nothing because that will sometimes disable other options. And then you can specify the speed there. So if you're using a key, so like this, uh, or a remote, which I talked about in this video up here, you can specify a remote speed to do it uh, wirelessly without having to be by the camera. Shooting display. So this is uh, grid line displays like we had in photo. We don't use these in here because we use uh, guides, which we'll talk about in a bit when we get to it. Emphasized record display is, um, is really useful, is this red box around the outside there when you hit record. If you have that turned off when you hit record, you don't have that and you just have a little record button there. So highly recommend that you leave that turned on. It just gives you an extra way to see that you're recording from a distance or whatever. If you can't see that little recording symbol, it's just easier to see. Leave that turned on. That got introduced with the A7S III and really good feature. Markers. Right. So this is what you see right here. Everything I have displayed. So I'll show you all of these. If we turn these off, you see the markers disappear and I get what I had in photo mode. So to what I have uh, turned on is my center display. So that little cross that's now gone, if you turn that on, cross is there. Useful for seeing where the center of the frame is. And then my aspect markers, I have 185.1. If you change it to 235.1, narrows a little bit more. You go to 15 by nine. Whatever you wanna shoot, there's a bunch of options there. Four by three gives you your guide frames. Uh, so your aspect markers, so that's why I use 185.1. You can also turn on safety zones at 80 or 90%, so it gives you an additional box, so that's like 80% of your frame, uh, and then 90% of your frame is a little bit more. I have that turned off in general. Oh, and guide frames on if you wanted to have a guide frame on as well as your guides, but that's a lot on there. If you need to abide by the rule of, thir uh, rule of thirds grid, you can turn that on there too. That is pretty much like the photo rule of thirds grid. But I have that off. What's next? Exposure. Leave that as is. ISO range limit. In general, if you're shooting with log, you want your minimum to be 800. Why? Because that's your base ISO. Okay. Auto manual. We're not going to be touching that, so we're going to leave that as is. Uh, but yeah, for log, minimum base ISO, 800 always. Otherwise, you're going to be sacrificing... Um, image quality, dynamic range, all that stuff. So uh, have that set to that. Now, if you're not shooting log, you could probably put that all the way down. But if you're shooting log, just leave it at 800. Exposure compensation. If you like to play around with that, change it. I don't. Metering, same as how I had it set up for photo. White balance, I have set to auto right now. If you wanna go through and change that, you can pick the white balance you want. As I said, I have this assigned to do the same thing. Uh, I also have it assigned inside the function menu right here. Now, with white balance, priority set as we talked about before, but also shockless white balance. So if you're in auto white balance, do you want it to change fast or like gradually so it's it looks like something you could potentially use in video, like it's a gradual change. It's not just like, oh, blue to warm. So that's there if you wanted to do so. Now, to set your white balance based off of a gray card, or a white card, you do that, you go down to your custom ones at the bottom here, click on that, click on set, put your gray card in front. We can do it. So you put your gray card in front, hit okay, and then that's your, your custom white balance is now set. We are going to change it back to auto right now because that is super blue. Right, next up, color and tone. Dynamic range optimizer, leave that off. Creative look, if you wanted to shoot in like a baked in look, and I've talked about this before in a bunch of videos, I'll probably cover it with this one as well. Up here, picture profiles. Picture profile 8, S log 3. If you want to use it, that's where that one is. Probably have that assigned inside here somewhere if you wanted to access it quickly like I have. I have it turned off right now just to show you for this video, but that's how I turn it on and off. And then soft skin effect, leave it off. Zebras. Before, as I mentioned, I have all those little assists on my uh, dials right here. 
if you want to set your zebra level, that's how you do it within the menus. Autofocus, manual focus, continuous autofocus or manual focus. Again, C3 bun set up to do that. Transition speed. I have mine set to uh, five, which is in the middle. So that's how how quickly it's going to zoom back and forth. If you have that super fast, it's going to be quicker to autofocus, but it's going to be kind of jarring. If you want like that rack focus, transition speed set it to one slowest. It's going to be like a nice pull focus. And then subject sensitivity is if you, what it's going to detect in the frame. So if something's in the frame, it's going to quickly shift to the autofocus on that. Um, I have mine set to four right now. I find in general, that's pretty good for me. Autofocus assist. This is a great feature. So if I turn this off, just so you can see, I'm in autofocus right now. If I turn this, the focus ring, we're in autofocus, of course it's not gonna work. But autofocus assist is a great feature when turned on because it allows you to be in autofocus, but actually take control manually. And then when you let go, it will just go back to autofocus in a minute. So that's a really useful feature um, to have on the camera there. Focus area, I have mine set to wide. Focus area color, I have it set to red and a focus area limit, I just have all those turned on as, just like we talked about for photo. Same stuff here for photo, focus assistant, focus map, that's how you'd access it, but I also have it assigned to my left D-pad there. Focus magnifier, also have that assigned to my center button. And then for your focus magnification time, no limit as we discussed before. With this, you don't get 5.5 as a maximum uh, magnification, you only get four. You can have it set to one, so that when you do click it, you can specify the area you wanna focus on, then click it, or, go straight in. And then when you're straight in, you can actually control it on the screen or you can move it around on the screen as well. Peaking display, you can set the level there, mid, low or high. And then the color you wanna use, red's gonna be easiest if you do use focus peaking on or off. However, as I said before, on or off, right on the D-pad there, much easier to, uh, to use than going into the menus. These menus, we're gonna skip right through it. We don't need to use it again. Uh, same for these ones. We're going to skip right through them because we're not using any of these for, for video. For video, we're going to be using some of these. We already talked about that. We already talked about that. To customize your video settings, you go down to video. And then again, the same thing. You have a map. You can go through and change everything. You get all your different video features in there. I'm not going to go through this individually. I've already shown you how mine is set up. You get everything in there. Function menu. We covered this as well. When it comes to video, I have things in here that I have assigned to a button as well, but they're here is if I'm in the menu, I need to change something, they're there, or for whatever reason, if I go into this, opposed to pushing the button, but normally I'm trying to have a button assigned instead. So uh, audio levels, creative look, my white balance is at the front there, I forgot to mention that one, picture profile, gamma display assist. So if you are shooting uh, with picture profile eight, it's gonna look really gray and flat because it is. If you turn this on, this is like an S-Log3 Direct 709 conversion lot directly in the camera. Turn it off again, because we're gonna go back to no picture profile. Zebras on or off, recording frame rate, but as I said, like zebras on or off, recording frame rate right there, just easier to access. Uh, breathing compensation, great feature. So it reduces breathing compensation with new Sony lenses, which are designed for stills. You don't have your focus breathing when you're turning that on. Uh, I don't have it turned on right now because it won't work with this lens, which is the 50 mil f1.8, super old lens. If I had a different lens on here, it would work. Focus map there, stabilization, how I access it, and then my focus area as well. Back into the menus, different settings for still and movies. We covered this already, so we don't need to do it again. And we already covered this, recording with the shutter if you wanted to, but you have a record button, so you don't need to. Uh, dial customize, we already covered this, so we don't need to cover that again. Touch operation, we already covered this. Uh, however, for video, you might use tracking now and then. So if you want to track on something, that's my tracking. So you see the little symbol there that has like the little moving after, that's your tracking. Tap the center button to cancel your tracking. And then that is touch screen is off. And then that is just tap to focus a, a specific point. Uh, but that's the one in general you're gonna be using most of the time, at least for video in my case, if you're tracking in a moving subject or something like that. Gloss over that again, cause we didn't use it. Uh, and then video, you're probably gonna wanna set this if you're outdoors to sunny weather. Like we said before, all this stays the same. All this stays the same. Gamma display assist, that's another way to turn on and off, but obviously I have mine set in here. And then auto is what I recommend because it will detect what 
uh, picture profile you're using and apply the right log, uh, the right gamma display assist type for you. So if you wanted to specify it for HLG or S-Log2 or S-Log3, it will do that for you, but automatically it's just going to do it for you anyway. Leave that as is. Auto review five seconds for photos, but we're not shooting photos in video mode. Leave that as is, as is, as is. Auto power off temperature, high again. Sound options, leave that as is. USB, leave that as is. External output. So if you wanted to use a Ninja or a monitor or something like that, this is where you'd control that. If you want it to work properly, have this set to auto. Output display settings. Recording media during HDMI, have that set to on. Output resolution, have that set to auto. Depending on the monitor you're using here, some of these settings can change. So if you have issues with this, pop a comment down below and I'll, I'll try and help you out the best I can. Um, there's certain ways to trigger recording to the Ninja, but it, it, it's dependent on the setup that you're using. So there's no kind of one size fits all. One important thing here, if you are using a Ninja and you want to show the settings, like I could have recorded here to show you the settings directly, but I want to physically show you me touching the camera instead. This is where you'd leave this turned on. If you turn that off, it won't show the menus, like all this stuff, as well as what it's recording. So if you want to just record what's coming through the lens, you leave that off. If you want to show the menus as well as what's coming through the lens, so basically what's being shown on the screen right here, turn that on, okay? Control for HDMI is uh, is part of how you can trigger record. That's a whole video in itself. And then setup options, uh, we'll leave this as is. Anti-dust function. Um, so this here will basically, on the A7 IV, you can have the shutter cover the front of the sensor. So off means the sensor will be exposed if you take a lens off uh, and turn this on. And the it tells you there, don't uh, don't touch the shutter, it may damage it. The shutter will cover the sensor if you have that turned on. That was really hard for me to get out. And then that is it. That is everything. That is all the settings I have for photo, for video, for the a7 IV. As I said before, if you want to just have it done for you, there's a link down below. And um, that is that. I felt like I talked a lot. This video is going to be like an hour long. If you made it this far, hopefully your camera set up how you want it to. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.